מר טוביה לוסקין. מטוביה ביקשנו שידבר על היבטים של חיפושי נפט ביבשה. זו הזדמנות אולי להזכיר ואפילו להוקיר את העקשנות וההתמדה של מר לוסקין בנושא של, בנושא של חיפושי נפט לאורך שנים, לאורך שנים רבות. וכולנו מקווים עכשיו שבקידוח מגד חמש, שהוא לא הולך להידבר עליו בפרוצות, קצרתי לנכון להזכיר אותו, שנמצא בתהליכי בדיקה כאלה ואחרים, ומדינת ישראל גם שם תזכה, בעזרת השם, לבשורות טובות בהמשך הדרך. בבקשה, מר דוסקי. תודה. working on Megat project. Uh, I am representing here company Givot Olam. Uh, this is a public company traded on the stock market in Tel Aviv since 1993. Uh, the, the public uh, put all the money into this project. We have invested already over $65 million uh, in drilling four wells and shooting seismic and uh, uh, in interpretation of uh, all the And, uh, and interpretation, etc. And, uh, and uh, <coughs> we have discovered uh, make it oil field. And uh, unlike any other company in Israel, we're probably unique in this sense. We have, uh, we have uh, mapped and selected the make it area, the Rosh Hain area, From the very beginning, since 1992, we received a permit in this area, and we never moved anywhere, and we persisted, and uh, uh, finally, uh, we believe we have uh, confirmed that we have uh, an oil field discovered in, in the Megat structure. Uh, that's, that's probably as much as I want to say at, at this audience about, about activities of, of Kibbat Olam. Uh, I'll just speak uh, now briefly, the time I have, on the on general subject of energy. Uh, often people ask me, why is it suddenly we have found all this gas offshore and oil onshore more or less at the same time? What, what's the trick? What's going on here? And, uh, and usually there are clever people, maybe very clever people, who ask these questions. So my answer to this is, is that uh, basically the time has come when the technology of, uh, of oil industry has come to the point where, where it is possible to, 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 to do what we're doing now. And economics are also right. Offshore, The deep water drilling has been developed for drilling and production and completion, and, and uh, the price went up. Therefore, all the conditions, of course, there are many other parameters which are needed. But these are the two major conditions which are always required for, for successful uh, exploration. You cannot produce unless you have the technology to do that. And onshore is exactly the same thing. We have discovered uh, oil in, in the Megat uh, structure back in 1994. And we drilled uh, three wells until the latest Megat 5 well. But until very recently, the technology was not really available to us. Maybe, maybe in the last five years, only developed to the stage where it is now. And Megat oil field requires uh, Fracturing, fracture technology and uh, propane, etc., which was not available back in '94 when, when we first discovered oil. Also, price of, price of oil uh, in '94 was less than $10 a barrel. Today is over 80. 
So these two parameters are basically responsible for, for all the uh, successful activities onshore and, uh, and uh, offshore and onshore. And of course, uh, time comes when these parameters are uh, set in place, when somebody will come, bring the expertise, and put the money. And this is what happens offshore, and we were patient enough uh, and, uh, to wait until the time when we can uh, start finally successfully production because of, de or because of uh, de technology development. Now another point which I want to bring, and this, uh, this, uh, this is basically uh, my main thought which I wanted to, to, to share with you today. Uh, why is Israel uh, coming into, into this uh, energy game, energy worldwide game, uh, so late in, uh, in time, over maybe 100 years of history past until today, for oil production in the world. We are today what, what is known to be in the world, in the industry, at the, at the peak of oil production. Until now, the production the, was always on the, on, the, on the increase, it was climbing up. Today, we practically reached the flat uh, plateau of oil production. Maybe we have already started the decline. If not, it will come very, very soon, and there is no question about this. And the decline in oil production will bring with it uh, very uh, cataclysmic uh, realities. Because uh, imagine there is suddenly not enough oil, price goes uh, crazy up, and uh, there is no way to, to avoid it. In today's world, uh, oil uh, and gas are responsible for probably around 90% of, uh, of energy production in the world, and uh, nuclear maybe another. Okay, nuclear maybe another 8%, and all other beautiful uh, clean energy responsible for less than 1%. They're beautiful, I have nothing against them, they should be developed. But the main question is what will replace the oil production and gas production in the world, because 100 years from now, it will be a day when it's it will be no more oil around. So my recommendation is that instead of taxing these industries, particularly in Israel, because we do have a pool of brain here, which uh, probably doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, and, uh, and, and this pool of, uh, of Jewish brain should be encouraged. Companies like uh, energy companies, uh, oil and gas producers, should be given uh, substantial incentives. New faculties of energy should be open and uh, hopefully we will be responsible for finding a real solution to the energy replacement in the world because if it's not found, the, the world will be very different for, uh, 50 years or even from now, or between 50 and 100 years. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.